to start by telling you, if you don't know the series, that we've had four exhibitions in the space. It's been so great, and I want to thank Seb and Julie and Agnes and the whole team here at 836, first of all, for inviting us to do this. It's been really great. So before I forget, thank you. <laughs> My name is Tom D. Maria, by the way, I'm the Director of Creative Growth, and I'm really happy you're here, I know most of you. Um, I want to talk very briefly about advancement, because I think this is a time of advancement, and I wanted to think about and think about how artists advance the culture, and how artists and art advance us as a people. And particularly at a time like this, when politically we feel so um, adrift and challenged, um, we can look at other times in history where artists have always led us through those difficult times because they are really who we are as people living in a society. And so as we now get ready to confront all the loss of funding for the arts and all the loss of artistic freedoms and freedoms of the press, it's really important to recognize that support for artists and artists themselves are really part of the transformative mechanism to society to move us forward. So it's a very important time. Think about the earliest artists, you know, the person who draws the deer on the cave wall. It's the most primary, beautiful example of a human being say, I'm alive in the world, and I'm drawing the animal because I'm different than the animal. And since then, artists have always done that. You know, you think about, you know, we know like, I was looking at like Beethoven, the Ode to Joy was really called the Ode to Freedom but under the Napoleonic Code, they didn't let artists talk about the quest for freedom because it was suppressed. <coughs> you know, but we know that as a song of joy and beauty and freedom. So the artists survive the political leaders. So it's a really important time and a really important thing to support right now. And the other kind of advancement is particularly the advancement of the two artists that we're showing tonight. So we have two artists here. This is the work of Judith Scott. I'll talk about her in a moment and Dan Miller. Dan's work is here on the side and in the back. We showed Dan's work and in the hallway when you come in. We showed a lot of his work earlier in the year, so we're showing tonight work of his uh, ceramic and fabric, which is less seen. Now, both Dan and Judith broke a couple of glass ceilings. Um, Dan was the first artist with developmental disabilities to have his work purchased by the Museum of Modern Art in New York and that was a couple of years ago, and we were really pleased by that. Judith has joined him in that collection. Judith is no longer alive, but both of these artists have now been invited to have their work um, exhibited in the Venice Biennale this um, May, which is phenomenal. It'll be the first time that two artists, any artists with developmental disabilities, have been pre presented and invited to participate in, if you know that work, it's essentially the Academy Awards of um, the art world, so we're thrilled for that. And that's been kind of a secret, so uh, um, uh, that's exciting. So that is advancement for them, and advancement for people and artists with disabilities. Judith's work quickly, and I'll just give you a little bit about both, and then be happy to talk to you about it after or take a few questions. Um, and first I want to recognize and thank all of the critical staff that's here, because they can talk to you too about it. Um, Becky Kautel Rada, our executive director, and Ryan is here, the administration, and Catherine is here, and Laura is here, and who else is here? Uh, Chloe, uh, Peter was here, who else have I not seen? Well, they're all, raise your hands if you're here, talk to them about the artists that they've all, Chris is here, so thank you for um, all your work. Judith's story is, you know, we don't like to lead with biography when we discuss artists with disabilities, we like to lead with the work. So I hope you think it's beautiful. Um, if the backstory about a, how, how a person arrives at creativity is interesting, her story is sort of second to none in terms of interest. Born a twin with Down syndrome and death, with a sister who is typical. They grew up together until age six, and the doctor says, well, she needs to go into an institution because she has Down syndrome. And the family asks, well, how do you do that? And the doctor says, well, you take her out of the bed in the middle of the night when the sisters are sleeping, and in the morning, no one will remember. So they do that, and the mother becomes guilt written around it. So Judith sits in an institution for 40 years. Um, they don't know she's deaf, so she doesn't acquire a language of any kind. At age 46, her twin sister has an epiphany and says, oh, I have a sister in an institution. We don't do this anymore. 
So she goes and gets her out of the institution and brings her to Creative Growth. Creative Growth is the Center for Artists with Disabilities in Oakland, where our artists work. And her sister just believed in the power of art to transform people as a transformative tool to creativity and communication. So Judith Sasser essentially kind of petrified for two years before she picks up objects, sticks, these are, this is the third and fourth sculpture that she made and starts to wrap them in fiber. And after, from the first ones till whatever, 21 years later and 120 sculptures later, she did it obsessively. The work is often um, objects that she picked up from the studio, we say appropriated. If it's art history, we say stolen. If you were in the studio, those days, and then wrapped and bundled, and you know they signify a lot of things about protection and safety, twins reuniting, two together, all these kinds of things. And her formal qualities, which change the sort of beautiful patterns and structures and surfaces of a piece like this, to her very late career work, which was rough and raw and much more art brute. Um, and then her colleague, Dan Miller. Dan is an uh, artist on the autistic spectrum, pretty much nonverbal, whose mother years ago tried to get him to speak by sitting with him every day and spelling words. And he didn't speak, but he was absorbing the spelling of the words. And 20 years later, when he started to draw and paint, all the spellings that he learned came out. So these are all word patterns and sentences, and they form both his communication with the world and this all other kind of contemporary, beautiful, aesthetic presentation and form. So the artists advance, the artists speak to us about ways that we don't necessarily understand how we are all the same as humans, whether we use language or not. And I think that's really what um, artists have always done. Uh, so I'm not going to say too much more than that, other than I'll take maybe one or two questions and then happy to talk to you.